Buffalo World, Patricia O'Connor, and one Frida Reba Dorsey here. Here you go, babe. Uh, no. And today is our Saturday drop. And on our Saturday drop, we're going to do what we tend to do. We're gonna look in on our trees. It's not, it is our Super Cypress Saturday. Every Cypress, every Saturday to us is Super Cypress Saturday. Hell, when I was 10, they told me that it was Super Saturday over cartoons and it's been Super Saturday ever since. And uh, I hadn't been 10 for a minute. Anyway, it is a beautiful day like no other absolutely gorgeous out and we're just going to do a little recap of what's going on with with everybody you can kind of see our little our little buds are doing all their little bud like things i uh looked back on the video after i told you you could see all those buds over there and they were a lot harder to make out uh in the video a couple of days ago i think those those are probably a little bit more prominent you see that's how it starts that little green speck in there in the dark that's kind of how it starts um so yeah that's what's going on there you can see all the the new growth popping out of this guy it's pretty exciting we are going to spend a little bit looking uh at our bald cypress trees the shade like I said, it is absolutely, you can just feel it, the temperature drop a little right there where it's cool. Uh, I guess I'll go, I guess I'll go with these scissors because I'm going to be a little closer down to the dirt. Uh, we're not going to do anything in the way of cutbacks uh, except for the part where where it's time to make a decision uh pick one of these guys and cut the other one because there's there's two right there we'll just no hard fact rules there we'll just go with that one yeah, yeah i'll let the little one below it go for a little while longer i love the smell i love the smell of cypress these little, you can smell the, the cypress whenever um, you make little cuts like that. A quick little look and everybody here seems to be doing, seems to be doing nicely. Boy, these things are so pretty when they grow. As far as, uh, you know, I don't know that I would have any more enjoyment from this tree. Uh, if it were a finished bonsai tree, I am really enjoying the process when it comes to these guys. I do get a lot of pleasure looking at them. They're so, they are, uh, to me, they're beautiful. And the way they buttress and the way their barks, the way they have that texture to their bark in contrast with the, uh, the different shades of green that come in their foliage and it is soft to the touch it's just like like feathers almost they are very lacy and um predate the dinosaurs yeah predate the bugs uh predate the pines predate the oaks these guys have been around a minute um some of our original little bits of land masses might not have been much more than uh, tree islands formed by the fronds of these guys falling when they sprouted up in the shallows. Yeah, they go back a minute. Anyway, that's about all that's going on really with, uh, with our grouping of cypress trees. I've done a little bit of cleanup this morning. Nothing too much, just uh, like picking clover, as I call it. Clover is a lot better word than you ever want, but that's what it is, I think. Uh, a quick look over here at our various and sundry, uh, sundry um, species of grass that we have grown. Um, 
we're going to uh, let whatever wants to sprout there, sprout there. Hopefully at some stage of the game, we will see a uh, coastal redwood sprout. But if not, we'll go back and uh, try again. I was told going in, well, I've, I watched several videos on it and those videos all said the same thing, that coastal redwoods do have a very low germination rate and I am certainly seeing that. Also there in the, um, in the uh, grove that lives here on the property, you can go underneath that grove and there is like a, uh, I've said this before, probably it's three or four inches thick, just, you know, lay down with, with needles and fronds and those little cones are there by the thousands. And I check that about every once, about once a week or so, and I've been kind of watching to see and in that even better environment for them to sprout, I see nothing, not one. So evidently that's kind of what they mean by a low germination rate. Maybe we'll see if we can do a few things to step that up, like a heating pad or maybe breaking the cones down to their seeds and just going with those and, you know, uh, a little bit more education on the on that process probably wouldn't hurt us either. Just a little quick look at the Japanese black pine. It is doing nicely. The bougainvillea behind me is looking a little yellow because I think it's losing light over all those huge ass flowers. But um, I think it's doing okay. And uh, I think the oak next to it is uh, hanging in there. I would like to see it butt out a little bit more than, um, than currently what it's doing. But um, we'll take it. Just, just gonna swing around and look at the cypress tree. That guy is still, we did a top chop on it uh, last week. And so uh, anytime I do a video for, from now on, we're gonna swing around and check and see how that guy is surviving that. And I can't be over here at the table and uh, not check in on uh, Hoss. Um, Hoss is one of my little ponderosa pines. I absolutely am just smitten with this little tree and I think it is um, responding well to the feeding and uh, the amount of water and the amount of nutrients and stuff that it's getting. It seems to be budding out nicely and putting out a new round of needles and it's, it's really good to see. Now uh, I'm gonna do just a little quick pan over and show you how everything seems to be looking on the uh, Dakota Heim forest. It's looking, it's looking pretty good. I don't really have a lot of news on there except that it's been a week since I've weeded. So I need to go in there and weed. Big, big shocker there. But what I'm trying to work my way towards is, uh, is the coastal oak. I did as promised wire down uh, a few more branches. I'm working my way up the tree, uh, around and up the tree. So more things like this and this and this got wired and that got wired. Um, I think I probably did that last week. And these branches, maybe the ones that I actually wired the other day, those and the ones, if I'm getting that shot to the other side. Uh, also, uh, I'm glad to see, I don't know if you can see it, I'm glad to see that cobweb. Uh, I have not, I have not seen evidence of my leaf hopper in a couple of days. Uh, so that little bit of a web, I'm pretty sure that that's new. So that means, uh, they are still around, which is what we want them to be. We want them to still be around. I'm not going to, I promise I won't name you or nothing. We meant it anyway. Um, so I, that was one thing that I was kind of looking forward to showing you today. After I put a little bit more wire to those, to those bridges, I backed off and looked at the tree and I had definitely brought, brought the base down, you know, as far as the structure or the, the trim line or whatever it is. I definitely brought that down and I think that really, um, sometimes you wire stuff and you go, yeah, I don't really know that that's gonna make it look better in the future. 
right? That's kind of what we're shooting for. In other words, you know, you really love in the uh, in the moment what you've done. But this was one of those deals where, uh, given a proper uh, venue to look at it properly, I should have brought it brought it back and put it in the display to show you. But I don't know. I will be probably uh, doing some more wiring on it uh, tomorrow because it, you know I'm not going to do that today. I just did it a couple of days ago. But tomorrow would be another opportunity before I have to go back to work on Monday. So I'll pick another couple of more branches like this or something and maybe one or two up high. I think I need to take care of this in the next month or so before those branches get too thick for me to uh, be able to manipulate well. But um, as I stated in the last video, I am really starting to see where, even though it's a little slower than the cork bark, oh man, that thing is like on steroids. Uh, this guy is responding to its trim back as well. And, uh, and, and I'm just starting to see a lot more back biting. Um, feeding and doing trim work now is going to get us secondary and tertiary branches really quick really really quick i was kind of curious as to how that would work if i cut those back am i waiting until next spring to do this again and we'll get one or two out of it i'm not sure how long that's going to keep working but for right now um, I, i'm just going to keep doing that as long as we keep making cool choices and by that what i mean is is when something grows out and then starts elongating like like it's really starting to elongate out in between those by uh, cutting it back early, then that allows during this cycle of growth for that second secondary flush to come out in the here and now while we're still doing part of uh, part of what it was attached to. So part of that seems a little too fast, but is that works for us, and we are regaining our shape to this coastal oak uh, faster than what I had worried about when I suffered all that dieback. We're a couple of years away from having um, from having this guy be really, really nicely uh, ramified, but uh, we're not that long. We're not that many years away from having it uh, be right back, and to even more so because we just you know, since then I've, I've learned what uh, really, really, really kick butt ramification can look like on one of these guys. So, uh, you know, our canopy needs to be out here and needs to be kind of have, and kind of have a nice shape to it. And to that end, um, and to that end, I thought I would give a little indication of what of what I have in mind when it comes to uh, when it comes to log. Uh, I'm not going to just get excited merely about the branches that you see vibricating off. They need to extend out further. Uh, that might have been an exaggeration of the hand, but you know, a third further out, that canopy needs to get fuller, but it also needs to get a third, uh, you know, out here further for a sense of perspective for a tree with a trunk that big. So it wasn't my idea to simply grow everything out that long and then try to see if I could get it to fill in, but to grow it back almost half that long or a quarter that long and chop it back and let that ramification take some of that space and then chop that back and then have that come forward. And that's, uh, and that's really what I see there. I really see in the end, this having enough ramification in the bottom to where it's going to kind of fill in with light coming through it to that middle section, which will fill in to that top and that will just come right on around to here. And except that'll be out here and this will be out here and this will be out here. 
and so forth. And that's kind of the future I see for uh, log. And then log won't look so uh, loggy. And the angle, I love the angle. I'm not sure if it's gonna, if it is going to angle this way or if it's going to angle that way. But um, I do like putting motion in it. I, th I think whenever I, I propped it up this way, I think I propped it the other way last time, perhaps. Uh, or perhaps it was turned around the other way and it ended up being propped the same way. But uh, I think the way it is now really gives prominence to the to the massiveness of the uh, of the trunk. And while we're here, we'll just take a little glance back over at our pine trees online. Those guys are looking really pretty. They're starting to uh, their uh, candles are starting to show prominence now to where uh, we're entering closer and closer and closer in the candle cutting time for the black pines. And I'm looking at this rail and I'm wondering if I shouldn't increase my grow space by coming further in. We're just maybe two or three more of these jacks away and I could, I could increase this shelf space. Uh, I could do that by putting another board right even, right even with this and run in some metal strap from here to that one and then putting some floor jacks underneath that or let's see one two three four five six i could probably take this down to three jacks no more weight than on, is on it now and take the other three and bring those out to here uh that would make it yeah yeah, that would be fine. So we probably got that to burn, in fact. Uh, I think the jack in the corner, in the very, very corner, is a cinder block away from even, from even, being, from even uh, being on duty. I don't think it's really adding any support. You can't even see that, that guy up that far off in the corner. But, but it's overkill is what I'm saying. So one, two, is that right? Two, four, six. Yeah, I could reduce that front row down to three. Take the second three, bring them back here. Put another two by ten right behind this one, and then strap them together with what's called uh, mending braces. That's what you call it when you got a little flat strap of metal. About like this one would be about an inch wide by maybe three inches long with a couple of holes in it, and you just drape it from one. Uh, board to the other and they have some rigidity, but it may, mainly it just keeps uh, It keeps the two boards uh, Together tightly bound together you put one two Three of those or four of those along the bottom and put lag screws in them that don't come up through the top And that's how I would attach the two boards and then the supports would be uh, Three of those with those three still operating that and I could actually double this whole growing space. Um, so we definitely have not even realized uh, half. Not only do I still have room up here for smaller trees, but we could increase this space. What originally made me think about that is not so much that I want the extra space because I do. I still have, you know, this is a sketch is a catch-all space for uh, for crap. I mean, this could just as easily be a tree. However, trees that fit here, I have to worry about wind exposure. It's been you can kind of hear the wind probably whistling through the pine needles now. Uh, I have seen the side of some of these trees that is facing outward um, has, uh, I think, suffered more dehydration, uh, you know, which is to say that I don't believe they had trouble over, uh, over the wind beating them up as much as one side of the tree got dry because it was exposed to the wind. So maybe if I were to, uh, increase the width of that shelf i would that would allow me for instance having the trees this far in has done wonders 
from my Kodahan forest. Those guys would normally, I would be on the ropes with, uh, with powdery mildew or something. So that's kind of what got me to thinking about, you know, what was really helpful to that little forest was uh, moving it to where it's not in the wind as much as it is now. You can see how much that stuff's blowing around. And that's getting air, but it's not getting blown around. Uh, the oaks, even though they're four inches away from where they are, and the pines too, they seem to be getting um, less direct wind uh, than they were when this was the prime real estate, my only real estate for, for getting sunlight. Um, so that's kind of what's got me thinking about that. You know, in the future we have, we have room to grow for days. The only question is, when do we initiate that? And what will our next trees be? I think there may be a few more pondos in my future. I haven't totally gotten over my uh, my craze to collect ponderosa. Uh, they're kind of like, you know, I don't have a juniper, but I haven't really fallen into that juniper addiction yet. Uh, I say yet um, because that just probably there was a time when I said that about uh, pines. I'm like, I figure I'll probably fall in love with the pines, but I'm, right now I'm busy playing with the oaks and the wisterias and the cypress trees. But man, when I fell for the uh, for the pine trees, I kind of did it in a big way. And uh, now I love my conifers. Um, yeah. So um, that's kind of something to look forward to as far as increasing our space is concerned. I think our light is definitely uh, up to the task of turning all of this space in here into grow space. And I could have tall pedestals up here with individual trees on them as well. But um, just increasing the uh, real estate there of that shelf would be one Fairly, that is a board, one board, uh, four hardware store straps and some lag screws, which I already have, and half of those braces, which I already have. And I would be totally, uh, totally doubling the amount of space there and taking some of the stuff a little farther back from the edge if we decide later that that's been more helpful. Uh, at the time when I... Um, acquired this tree this was 20 years from seed and we definitely knew that it needed repotting but it was still about two or three months away from potting season but uh, when I bought it the person was like and you know that in just a little while you're going to need to repot this like we were just talking about that and you came up and said you wanted to buy this tree kind of a conversation and right after I brought it out here it would have stayed on the white part of the rail. And this damage was the first thing that it did as it was adapting to its new home. And I don't know whether or not that was because uh, maybe this side of the pot got dry, maybe this side of the pot got hot, but it was turned outward when that happened. And uh, it's responded well. That won't be anything this time, a few months from now, but, um, Whenever you do see something like that, it does make your wheels turn as to what do you need to do to uh, make your trees happier? Did they, was that the tree adapting? Was that me not getting water to this side of the tree adequately and the wind caused the needles to dry out and dehydrate on that side of the tree? Uh, you know, so when it comes to thinking about that, I'm always concerned about what my location four floors up uh, that shouldn't be that big of an issue, especially for healthy trees. But um, I don't want to take anything for granted. Our learning curve here is steep. And um, sometimes it helps to know what you don't have to worry about just so that you can 
focus on the things that you still do have to learn. I just can't help but swing over and give a quick glance at, uh, at our cypress trees. They sure are lacy and just peaceful looking. I mean, with whatever you got going on in your life, it's really, really easy to come hang out with the cypress trees and find yourself getting a little different perspective. And um, with that, I'm just going to say enjoy your day. Enjoy your trees if you have some. Enjoy other people's trees if they're sharing their moments in their life with you. If you don't, or even if you do, I enjoy other people's trees. Um, like and subscribe if you have not already. Our next drop will be tomorrow as we do get our Sundays off as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching.